Can you put it back on Slack? I left my worksheet somewhere else. Yes, so gonna... I can put that in Slack for you. Thank you. Let me do it, me do it right now. Um, give me one second. Let me All right, guys, let's kick it off. Today's uh, Level Up Training, Thursday, September 22nd. We are going to resume our business planning uh, worksheet that we went over. Um, two weeks ago, we started, we kind of went over the first half of it where we broke down our business and analyzed our business. Um, and let me pull up the worksheet so you guys can reference back what we were talking about. Uh, this, this worksheet here to develop your individual game plan. And we pretty much covered the top section, um, looking at a business analysis. So identifying like who our ideal client was, this is where we got detailed on what type of clients we want to work with, whether it's first time buyers, sellers, um, maybe the demographic, maybe the area or neighborhoods that we want to cover or county. Um, and then also uh, even like what type of client, like business owners, uh, people in tech, first time home buyers, stuff like that. So just trying to get really uh, detailed with that. We also went over strengths, like what are the strengths that we have in this business? Like what are th things that we're already good at um, that can work in our favor? Maybe we're good at, we know the contract very well, or we know the buyer presentation, or we're good at marketing, or we're not afraid to be in front of the camera, stuff like that, um, which are things that you can use to your advantage and double down on. And then we also went over what are the skills needed um, go ahead and mute yourself. Uh, Teddy, can you mute yourself? What happened? What happened? Uh, could you guys make sure you're on mute because I'm getting like an echo. Um, so we went over skills needed. Uh, what are the things that you need to work on? Are there certain areas of the business that you're just not strong at yet or you need training on? So maybe it's the buyer presentation, maybe it's the contract, but just getting, you know, really detailed on the areas that you need to focus on so that these could be, you know, what you work on this next quarter. Um, lead generation was all about identifying how we're going to go out there and get leads. Uh, we always recommend have maybe two, maybe three at the max, but what are the two or three ways you are going to get leads? Uh, for a lot of us, it's going to be online leads that you're either getting from the team and then working your friends and family and sphere of influence. And then uh, you could possibly add in a third if, let's say, you're doing open houses at a high level or you're out there networking. But basically having a clear plan on like, this is how I'm going to go out and generate my business. So you're not spread thin and kind of all over the place. And you're more focused on two or three key areas that that you can really get good on and go deep on. Um, we talked about average sales price and average commission. What's your average sales price in your area? Or maybe for the clients that you've served, if you already have some experience. And then what's the average commission? And that's kind of as far as we got. Um, so this part of the training, what I really want to do is I want to focus on uh, everyone fully understanding like what their goals are as far as income, sales, and volume, and how to calculate those numbers on your own. Um, Jessica, you raised your hand. I don't think we went over the average sales price and commission. Okay, we can go back over that then right now. Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll go over that and we're gonna go over the goal, right? How to break your goals down. Because here's the thing guys is, if you don't have a goal that you're trying to go after, if you don't know what the number is that you're trying to reach, then how are you gonna hit that number, right? So it's extremely important that everybody knows their number. And that's gonna be different for everyone, depending on what your goals are or what your skill level is, or maybe where you're at in your business. But you need to have a realistic number that you're trying to achieve. 
it shouldn't just be like, oh, I just want to sell a lot of houses because Enrique says, go out and kill it and crush it. Or I know I just need to perform. If you want to get to a goal, it should be very calculated, right? So you should be able to take your income goal and then reverse engineer and break that number down into how many sales you have to do based off your average sales price, your average commission. So I'm going to walk through that and I want everyone to do this exercise on their own. As I'm walking through this, I want you to write your number down and we're going to all do it together. So we always want to start off with the end goal in mind, right? In the next 12 months, regardless of where you are at, right? In your business, in the next 12 months, the first number that I want you to write down is what is your income goal? How much income would you like to bring home uh, before taxes, right? You're going to do your taxes and that's going to look different for everyone. But after splits, you know, after, you know, team splits, EXP, whatever, like how much money do you want to hit your bank account from your real estate business? So I want everyone to write that number down. The gross number, guys. Your gross, yeah. Gross commission income that you earn. In the next 12 months. And, and as you're writing that goal, I want you to think about it as well. I want you to think about why you're writing that number. Is that a number that's actually calculated? Like, hey, this is how much I need to pay my bills and, and to have the lifestyle that I want and stuff like that. Don't just throw numbers that sound good because that's what a lot of people do. Like 100,000, six figures. That's what I want to make. But why 100,000? Why not 150? Why not 250? Why not $78,999, right? Like everyone has different, you know, monthly obligations and stuff like that. And everyone has different lifestyles that they're trying to achieve, but you got to get really detailed on what it is you're trying to hit so that you can now formulate the plan and be able to attack that. So like, I'll like, I'm just going to give you like a hypothetical example. Let's say like every month your bills you know, come out to $5,000 a month, maybe because you have rent, you got a car payment, you got some credit cards, you like to go shopping, your food, all that stuff, whatever you do, let's say $5,000 a month is what you need to cover your bare minimum to pay all your bills. And then you got to factor in, well, hey, that's just to live, right? But do I want to maybe take a vacation once in a while? Do I want to put any money away for retirement? Do I want to be able to save up, you know, maybe to buy a house if I don't currently own a house? Um, you know, maybe I got, you know, some sort of plans I want to do in the future. Maybe I want uh, to buy a new car. Maybe, you know, I owe my significant other, you know, a gift or something, right? Whatever it is that you want to do, it's going to look different for everybody. But I would not put a number down that's just that's to cover your living expenses, because that should be the bare minimum, right? Like if you're going to go into this business and work on commission only and work in a really challenging business, you might as well like try to set something up that's actually going to be worth it, right? Um, so I want you guys to get out of the mentality of I'm not just trying to make the bare minimum. I'm actually trying to have a lifestyle here, right? I want to be able to do the things that I, I want to do and I want to be able to work hard for it and have something to show for. Because uh, if you're only just trying to do a bare minimum to cover your, what you need to live, then you're kind of thinking like a job, right? You might as well go find the job that pays you that with guaranteed pay and guaranteed you know, uh, benefits and stuff like that if you're just looking at this as a job. But being an entrepreneur, which all of you guys, if you're in this business, you're self-employed, you are entrepreneurs. So let's... Let's maybe establish that right now. I want everyone to say this. I am an entrepreneur. Everyone say that out loud. I am an entrepreneur, right? Because you are an entrepreneur, right? You're self-employed. You are someone that has to go out there and build their business and build their brand. You are not an employee. You're not just a salesperson, right? Even though you're real estate license says real estate salesperson, you're an entrepreneur at, at the end of the day. You are in a, in a field that's a lot more risky, right? There's a lot more risk, but there's a lot more reward. 
because there's no training wheels, there's no base pay, you know, being on commission only. But the upside is like, if you work really hard and you treat this like a business and you go all in, you can make a ton of money and create an awesome lifestyle for yourself and your family. So make sure the number that you write down is worth it, right? Like it's worth your while. Now, the flip side to that is don't also write a number down that's just like completely like there's no way in hell like let's say it's day one and you're like i want to make a million dollars in the next 12 months like is it possible yeah i mean yeah i mean people do it all the time but is it likely right so try to find that balance where it's like you're not selling yourself short but you're not like just throwing some wild dream in the air that is not going to be attainable for you right find that number where like hey if i push myself like I know I could probably hit this number, right? So it has to be a push number, but it shouldn't be like something that's completely like in another galaxy, right? If you get what I'm trying to say. Okay, so does everyone have their number written down? Raise your hand if you wrote your number down. Okay, cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of math now. And this is the part where I start losing some people. So you got to understand the math, guys, because if you don't, here's the thing. If you don't understand your numbers and you don't understand how to calculate your commissions or anything like that, it's very simple math, but you got to understand these things because that, if you know your numbers and you'll know what deals to go after, you'll know what's worth your time, what's not worth your time, all those different things. So you have to know the basic numbers. Uh, so I'm going to pull up just a blank Google doc and we'll do some math on here. And I want you guys to write this down as well. So I'm gonna use an example of $250,000. If I wanna make 250,000. 250,000 is my goal in the next 12 months. Well, to figure out how many deals I need to know, I need to earn or close to get to 250,000, I would need to know a couple things. I need to know what my average uh, sales price is. I need to know my average commission, percentage, and dollar amount. I would say average uh, gross commission, right? And then I would need to know average take home, right? What do I take home after splits? So number one, average sales price. Um, there's two ways to look at this if you've already closed transactions before like you've already been in the business over a year and you close transactions and you know like how many deals you closed and what your volume was then you can just easily say hey i closed 20 million in volume and that, that was you know 12 transactions and then basically you would do uh, on your calculator you would say 20 million you know in sales let me put my calculator Calculator. Can you guys see my calculator? No. Um, let me see. There we go. Can you see it now? Okay. So if you know your numbers, you can say, hey, uh, 20 million in volume. One, two, three, one, two, three. And I did that in 15 transactions. So 20 million divided by 15. That means my average sale was 1.3 million, give or take. Right? So if you know your numbers because you've done sales in the last 12 months and you can, you can figure out more or less what your average sales price was by just doing the math. If you don't know your numbers, we can just use the default number on our team and we can say it's right around a million, give or take right? It's plus or minus a million. So a million is a good rule of thumb because especially out here in the Bay Area, you got 
at homes that are you know roughly a million give or take uh, on average um, but if you have higher numbers than that because you've been focused more on higher price points and stuff like that then you can use the higher number but i'm going to just say a million um, is going to be the number that you'd want to use so let me go back to a worksheet here average sales price we'll plug in a million Okay, now average gross commission on a deal is gonna be roughly two and a half percent, right? Because two and a half percent is usually what you get on the buy side. If it's a listing, it's usually around two and a half percent after you know staging costs and all those things, even though sometimes we charge a little bit more than two and a half. But by the time you pay for all the marketing stuff, it's usually about two and a half. So two and a half percent. So $1 million is your average price times two and a half percent. You can do the math on your calculator. 1 million times 2.5% is 25,000 bucks. So that would be the average gross commission before splits or anything like that. You guys following me so far? Okay. Now your average take home after split. So how much of that 25,000 do you get after any splits? Well, that's gonna vary, right? So it's gonna vary on a couple factors. Number one, like if all your business is coming from Zillow Flex and Zillow Flex is taking 35% off the top and then you're getting paid, you know, your split depending on which tier you're at. Um, it might be a little bit lower, right? If half your business is coming from flex, half is maybe coming from agent generated on your own, you get paid more on those. Um, but I would say a good rule of thumb is going to be, it's going to be anywhere from like 50 to 70% is what you're going to take home depending on the deal. So I would just maybe use 60% as just a roundabout number. Could be high higher right um some of you guys that are still in mentorship right this is assuming like once you're out of mentorship and you're on your own and you're closing your own deals for the sake of this example but let's say 60 percent is what you take home from the average commission of that so i'm going to take twenty five thousand times 60 percent it's roughly 15 thousand bucks per deal i mean enrique you could we could even i mean i don't know i would say even be less aggressive even do 50 percent to show them how easy it is to make a quarter million dollars right yeah we can do that too um just some people are on higher splits too though right so if some yeah. of you guys that are that are more experienced or you're on a higher tier you're probably going to make a little bit more some people might be a little bit less if you're just starting out um so yeah, we can say uh, that number can change for you guys, but if we want to go off 50%, we can do that too. The whole point is just knowing how oh, to yeah. calculate these, right? So 50% of 25,000 would be 12,500 bucks, which is probably the, that's the lowest starting point that we have on our team, right? It's only high, it goes up from there. Exactly. So take, I, I'm giving like almost like I don't want to say worst case, but this is like you said, the starting point low because I want to show how easy it is to hit the next number. Yep. OK, so 250 is our income goal, right? For this example, average sales price a million, average gross commission is 2.5%. So I'm going to write that down 2.5% which is 25,000 average take home after splits 50% for this example, 12,500 bucks. So now what you can do is you can say, okay, if I want to make 250,000 divided by 12,500 per deal, how many deals do I need to close? Twenty, 
right? So 250,000 divided by 12,500 is 20 deals. 20 transactions at a million at two and a half percent at a 50% split. Once again, if you're a more experienced agent, your split's going to be higher, right? So maybe less than 20, maybe it's going to be like 15 or 16 deals instead of 20, but 20, we're going to use just for this example, 20 transactions uh, on the most conservative split to hit 250,000 income goal. Okay, so I want to stop right here. What questions do you have about calculating this number right here? Because this is, this is the most crucial part, right? Is knowing how to take your income and then reverse engineer. Does anybody have any questions on how we arrived at this number? Please raise your hand or unmute yourself or drop it in the chat. Good. All right. So the next step, guys, is going to be once I have my transactions that I need to do, now how do I break that down into the rest of the year, right? Into quarters, into months, and stuff like that. So we, we talked about our, our income goal over the next 12 months. In this scenario, if you want to make 250, you need to do 20 transactions. So now what I can do is I can now break that down per month, right? So I can say per month, I can say per quarter. So 20 divided by 12, that's approximately 1.6 per month. We're going to round that up, right? Because you can't close a 0.6 of a deal. So we'll round that up to two deals a month. Per quarter it's gonna be the same thing, right? It'll be six, six per quarter, basically. So what I want you to get at guys right here is that a lot, a lot of times we see this big number up here, this 250 or whatever your number is. And it's like, whoa, like that seems so out of reach, right? Because we're looking like, a year from now, right? In the next 12 months, that number can often seem unattainable. But the point is when you just start to break it down to the simplest of numbers and break it down to what's my monthly that I got to do, what's my quarterly, then you now take that big goal and you chunk it down to a small number that is a lot more attainable, right? So two deals a month. Like, does that seem difficult for you guys? Like in this example, and maybe let's talk it out with you guys. What's your, what's some of your guys' uh, number that you came up with? How many deals per month do you got to close to hit your goal? Drop it in the chat. Two, two to three, three to four, two, two to three. So most people wrote two, two to three, three to four, one to two. Now, one of the things I want you guys to factor in is this is now us going a little bit deeper is to close two deals a month, you're pr probably going to have to get a little bit more in contract because you may have some deals that fall through. You may have some deals that roll over into the next year, right? Because if you get a deal in contract in December, it's probably not going to close till January. So if you absolutely want to hit your number and you want to make that income, you have to factor in the rollovers and, and the fallout 
which we have seen is usually 10 to 15 percent um, fallout, rollover, whatever it might be, right? You might have a deal here and there that falls through, that cancels, or something that rolls over to the next year. So 15 percent roughly is a number that that we would look at. So I'll go back to my sheet here. And if I know the number is 20, then I can add 15% gross up for fallout and rollover. So if I said 20 plus 15%, that's 23, right? So 20 plus 15% more is 23 deals, which we already rounded these numbers up anyways, right? Because it, it didn't come out to an even number, which still puts us back into two deals roughly per month to hit this goal. So it's safe to say, guys, that at a bare minimum, if you were to put two deals in contract every single month, even at the lowest split, even if it was just all from Zillow Flex and, you know, they're taking 35%, assuming you didn't go out and get your own deals, anything like that, all it takes is about two deals a month in contract to make $250,000 on our team. Now, what I want you guys to now do is say, okay, two deals a month. Now, how am I going to get my two deals a month? How many appointments do I need to set? Or how many appointments do I need to meet with, right? And then how many do I need to set to meet those amount of appointments, right? Because not every appointment that we set ends up meeting with us or ends up converting. So if we wanna get two deals a month or two clients a month on board to work with us, um, that means we would probably, from the clients that we meet, roughly about 25% of maybe the clients that we actually meet with are, will be well-qualified clients. Doesn't necessarily mean those are the amount of appointments we need to set, right? But I would say if I book four, if I meet with four different clients and, you know, I ask them the right questions and I set the appointment and all that stuff and they actually show up to the appointment. Out of those four, there's probably going to be at least one that is a solid deal, right? At the bare minimum, right? At least one out of four, even if like you're not that good, maybe you could even say one out of five, right? Like it's just really up to you. But, but I want to make this, I want to make this super simple for you guys, right? Let's say, let's say one out of five is a good, is a, a good client, right? You meet with five, four of them, they're just like, they're not motivated, they're not qualified, but at least one of those five that I met with is going to be a client that I can work with, right? So that means if I want to get two deals, I need to meet with 10 clients, right? So if I meet 10 per month, Two out of those 10, right? Two of 10 is hot, basically. And that's like really conservative, right? Some of you guys have better numbers than that because you guys are booking more quality appointments, but I want to go like worst, worst case scenario. I meet with 10 people, two of those are a deal. So how many appointments do I need to set to meet with 10 people? right? Because you already know you book appointments, some people cancel, reschedule, can't track them down, they ghost you or whatever, right? So I would say out of the appointments that we set, we're probably meeting with 60 to 70% of those people, right? So if I we, want we to- be conservative, Enrique, just do 50, make that 50%, make the numbers like simple. We can say 50. All right. Out of every appointment i every appointment I book or every two appointments I book, one shows up, right? So if I just multiply this number by two, just being really conservative, that means I need to set 20 appointments per month.
This is the very, very worst case scenario, right? Per month. Now, let's break that down per week. Met per week. What is that? 20 divided by four is gonna be five appointments. And out of those five, I need to meet with, what is that? Two and a half. Two and a half, two to three. Now, so here's the good news, guys. Is like, even if you suck, even if you're not that good, even if you're not that well rehearsed or whatever, or you're barely getting started or you don't have luck on your side or you're not, you know, consistently upping your training and your skills and all that. If you just meet two to three people a week, whether it's people you meet through showings, through uh, appointments you just set, anything like that, but people who are interested in buying or selling real estate, if you meet with two to three people a week and you keep that consistent throughout the year, 250K is, is very, very attainable. Now, the way that you can make this number lower, right? Like make your, uh, be more effective. So you have to meet with less people is obviously by training, right? Getting better at your skill set. Marketing yourself, right? Because there's some leads that are going to be hotter than others. For example, a cold Zillow lead or a cold lead versus one of your friends or family who contacts you because they've been following your social media and they see all the things you're doing. The, the friend or family or person who already knows you is going to be a lot easier to convert than that stranger that you met off Zillow or that stranger you met at an open house right? You'll need to meet more strangers to convert one deal than you would with people who already know, like you and trust you. So that's why we have this two-pronged approach, right? Where we want you guys to go out there and generate deals on your own, meet people, network, generate deals off your SOI by putting yourself out there, marketing yourself, social media, all that good stuff. And then also working the lead channels that you have through the team, right? Working the open houses, just getting the leads that come in, Zillow Flex, the Pond, Op City, all these different cold lead sources so that you can get the volume that you need to stay on track with your goals. So my question to you guys is um, give me some feedback. Like after breaking down your numbers, like, well, let's see, uh, how about this? Because to make this effective, I want to like break it down with someone. So who would like to volunteer and share like the numbers that they broke down? All right, Miles, let's go, bro. Unmute yourself. Cool. <clears throat> Mine was pretty much... Um... Pretty much what you, what you, how the way you broke it down, um, like five thousand for rent and bills, five thousand for savings. Um, one of my goals for the next twelve months is to be able to give my mom five thousand a month. So I put that in here, and then like three thousand for fun and two thousand for like random. So, I mean, it's a lot more than I'm making now, but I mean, I know it's that's not too far, too far fetched. So. I'm right there. So what's your income goal? Income goal for the year? What would be your income goal? 250. 250. Okay. I mean, I feel like I can do the same for you. I'm sorry, what was that? I said with 250, I pretty much broke down the numbers for you, right? So Right. Yep. Okay. So I guess the takeaway, Miles, is now that you see that, like what's what's the bottom line? Every week, what must you do? Um, bottom line is five a week, but I'm personally going to shoot for higher. So, okay. I would, I would say like seven a week. 
seven appointments a week. Book seven appointments. And how many people do you have to meet, actually meet with that actually show up? Two to three. Two to three. Yeah. Okay. So now that you know, it's like two to three, I just got to meet with two to three people every week. Does that seem easy or hard or how does that seem for you? Um, I mean, I haven't really had appointments yet, but uh, like I spoke to Jason and Rob last week, I'm um, applying myself more. So I'm giving myself more time now instead of going to the barbershop after I leave the office to make some money. I'm just pushing that out the way and just putting more time in there just so I can make appointments. So um, so I'm, I'm starting to push myself more. I had a good day with calling yesterday. I got, had a lot of contacts yesterday, uh, but just no appointments. So okay. just pushing myself harder now. Okay. So the, the areas that I would focus on that I would recommend is number one, you got to show up, right? So that's the, that's the starting point is mm -hmm. you got to show, show up and put the effort in, right? Like if you're not out any output in form of calling, posting on social media, reaching out to people, texting people, that there has to be that output, right? So I would start there, right? Like, am I actually putting out the output that's going to generate me, you know, two to three appointments to show up mm -hmm. every week, right? Or five to seven appointments set, two to three met, right? Start off with the output. And that's the question you got to ask yourself. Have I been putting in enough shots on goal? Um, I like to say shots on goal, right? It's like, if you're playing hockey or soccer or anything like that, you got to kick the ball into the goal, right? You got to hit the ball into the goal. We know every shot doesn't go in, right? But if you throw a lot more shots, like one of them's bound to go in, right? So that's the part that we have to audit on ourselves. Am I putting out enough shots? Am I shooting enough shots to hit the target, right? And then, and so that's the starting point, right? And then number two is when I am shooting my shot, am I effective? Am I rehearsed? Am I saying the right, right things? So it's a two prong approach, right? And that's where training, comes in and experience comes in and then that's when actually just doing the work and putting the shots out and shooting your shot comes in right now here's the here's the magic the magic is that the more shots you put out the more experience you gain in that process to where one day you would have put so many like if you just made a goal to like make a thousand calls in the next month like you would have a thousand calls more experience right a thousand shots more experience than you did last month mm -hmm. which means on call number a thousand and one you would be way better than call number one mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. which means you already know what to say how to say it because you've already gone through a thousand calls so for some of us we just haven't gone through enough shots yet to get better right and then showing up to training and actually listening to the things that we're saying and then going and applying it that's how you're going to close that gap as quick as possible to where you may not have to book seven appointments in the beginning. You may have to, because there's going to be a lot of appointments that aren't uh, quality because you're just booking whatever, but it'll get to a point where you only got to book three or four appointments and two or three of them show up because you now know what to say, how to say it. It's a lot more quality and stuff like that. So I know like in my career, uh, when I first started in the game, like my first, year like i wasn't that good on the phones it was a lot of trial and error but i was just still making calls every single day hundreds of calls and then fast forward like a year or two when i actually was pretty decent on the phones like i go in there and like within an hour i'd book two or three appointments just because it's a lot better now when i actually made the calls so those are things that are totally in your control is training and actually putting in the the reps um, thanks for sharing, Miles. Who else wants to share? Who can break their numbers down for me? Uh, Mauricio wrote 33 calls a day equals 1000 calls a month. That's it, right? Like 33 calls a day. When you think like, I just said a thousand, it's like, oh, that's a lot. It's actually only 33 a day, right? So even if you just came in the office, you stayed until you made 33 calls, you did some training and then you bounced out, like stuff's going to happen, right? Like it'll happen eventually just because the numbers will average out. Um, 
who else can break down their numbers for me? What numbers did you write down? I want you to just walk me through how you broke them down. Yeah. Hey, I actually got a couple of people from my video today that want to uh, talk to me that, that might be ready. So that video that we posted was so far has been really good. There you go. There you go, man. Now, the key, the key is doing those every week, right? Every week, every week, every week, putting those videos out. Dewey, can you break your numbers down for me? What's your income goal, right? How many deals do you have to close? My, my goal was uh, what? 100k my, my i i i, I want to do something that's attainable because i have i never made 100k be before um uh so in order to do that uh i i think i need to do deals around like 800k uh and that's roughly two to three appointment per week. Uh, I I I um I I didn't no, I, I didn't do the calculation earlier because I was just uh, copying down what you wrote down, so I didn't really calculate my own. But roughly okay. one or two days per month, uh, per week. Let's do it then. Let's do the calculation right now because I want to make this. This time that we're here on, you know, on the training, I want to make it valuable for you, right? Thank because you. there's there may be someone out in the call that wants to hit 100K. 100K is a milestone for a lot of people, um, mm -hmm. and it's a great place to start. So we're going to go 100K. We already said, so I want you to do the math. Do we 100K? We said 12,500 is roughly what you get paid per deal. Mm -hmm. Right. That's based off a million dollar price point, two and a half percent commission. And let's say you take home 50 percent of that. So mm -hmm. what's a hundred thousand? What's a hundred thousand? Do it on your calculator divided by twelve thousand five hundred. That's eight. Eight deals. Mm -hmm. eight, eight deals. Eight deals at, at one million each. Right which also equals 8 million in volume, right? 8 million in total volume, which is basically eight deals at 1 million. Mm -hmm. um, to hit eight deals in a year, how many would you have to do per month, right? So eight divided by 12, it's less than one. Mm -hmm. Basically 0.6 deals, but we're gonna round that up to basically one a month. One per month. Which is gonna be per quarter, right? Quarter, we're just gonna multiply by three because there's three months in a quarter. Three per quarter. So in reality, that basically puts you at 12 deals in a year, right? Because that eight got rounded up to 12. Mm -hmm. That's also going to account like it's a little bit higher, but that'll account for like any deals that count, cancel, any deals that roll over, right? So your job is just basically do we just get one deal on contract per month. If you get one deal on contract per month, you'll make at least 100,000, if not a little more. Mm -hmm. Right now, one per month at a 20%, maybe closing rate, 20%, one divided by 20%. That means you got to book five appointments. Five appointments. Five appointments a month, right? Or meet with, you got to meet, meet five appointments per month. We're going to double that number because you already know some people will not show up, cancel, reschedule. So you got to book 10 per month. Mm -hmm. 
book 10 per month, which means you actually end up meeting five out of those five that you meet with. There's going to be at least one deal in there, at least probably more, but we're going with real conservative numbers. Mm -hmm. So per week, if we say 10 divided by four, because there's four weeks, that's basically two to three appointments per week set. So Dewey right here, we just broke it down. Mm -hmm. This is your goal right here every single week. Mm -hmm. If you, you can average two to three appointments every week. You will make I, at least 100,000. I've been average uh, one or two for through the pond. I'm planning to uh, purchase my um, key and then get on Zillow Flex soon. So I think I can, and that's doable for me. Okay. Um, and you've been booking most of your appointments through the pond, right? Yes. yes. Okay, so what's one thing that you can do mm -hmm. to get more shots on goal right now besides the pond? Social because media. the pond is all strangers, right? Those are all strangers. Mm -hmm. What about people that you know already? Um, know you, like you, trust you? I have a couple of friends who's planning to purchase next year. I am connecting with them and talking to them. Uh, and just build, uh, just nurture or like just trying to um, hopefully in the future, I can convert them or help them purchase their new home. Okay. So how can you stay in front of more friends and family and let, and remind them that you're a realtor all the time? Uh, I definitely had to contact them and that's my SOAI. So maybe just contact them, uh, get in touch with them and just letting them know I'm a realtor. Okay, so contact, SOI, right? Stay in touch. What's another way to stay in, to stay top of mind with your, your SOI? Uh, posting video on social media. Um, also, maybe inf in informative video. Um, posting uh deals or maybe a market update videos that they can learn a thing or two. Uh, I'm planning to post one today. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm going to keep trying. Uh, and then uh, hopefully everybody will know that I'm a realtor and I can convert them. There we go, man. So we just broke down your, your business plan right now. Like just think as we're talking, right? Mm -hmm. Contact directly. Your SOI, right? Call, mm -hmm. text, stay in touch. Call the pawns. Daily. Post on social media. Two times per week, I would say. So what I'm trying to get at, Dewey, is, and I want to break this down for everyone else, like it's, if you just do this and that's your focus and your goal every single week, and like you write that down somewhere and you say, my goal this week is I got to call the pond every day. I got to reach out to my friends and family, call them directly. And I got to post two times on social media to remind people that I'm a realtor. And that's all I got to do. You're going to get these two to three appointments set every week, bro. It's going to happen. But... You got to do all three of these, right? Like if you only call the pawn, well, you already said you're only averaging one to two appointments a week. Mm -hmm. We know you got to book two to three if you want to hit your, your target. So those other appointments that we're missing, they're going to come from calling your SOI and just staying in touch and posting on social media because then people will actually reach out to you when they're ready, right? Is there anyone in here like that realizes like once you kind of, once you break it down, right? And like you, it becomes a lot easier, right? Then it's like, okay, well, that's all I got to do. You know, so it, I find that taking that big goal and chunking it down and then just going like, what are the actions that I got to take every single day is really where it's at, right? Like, and the key is just keep it consistent. So you got to figure out like what's, what's the habit 
or what's something that you can do, like knowing yourself, right? Like if you know you got to call the pond or you know you got to post on social media or you know you got to call your SOI. This is where you got to ask yourself the question, what can I do to constantly remind myself of that so that I don't ever miss it? Like, do I have to have someone hold me accountable? Do I have to write it down somewhere? Do I have to do it early in the morning because I already know like I won't do it later? Um, write it in the chat, guys. Like, how do you hold yourself accountable to your goals? Like, what works for you? Because everyone's a little bit different. Hey, Enrique, I think one thing yeah. that um, stood out the, to me the most when I first started is that we're just so focused on closing so much deals and we just tend to forget like if you know that you want to make a hundred grand a year you have to break it down in the numbers right if you don't know the numbers it doesn't make any sense but at the end of the day also you learn to prioritize what you need to do per week and per day so you're not distracted on the unnecessary things or the noise so if your goal is to make a hundred grand go hanging out with your friends is not going to make a hundred grand <laughs> Focusing on lead generation and just focusing on getting more appointments. That's the goal. You're going to lose a lot of people, but at the end of the day, you get the goal that you wanted. Of course, families is going to be there, but I think what Enrique is also saying is you have to be honest with yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like that, Carla. And, and again, I think there's a lot of little simple things that you have to do, right? It's not one big thing that's going to make you that 100K. It's a lot of simple things on a daily basis that you're going to have to do. And that is being extremely disciplined, extremely consistent. Those two things, especially since we're entrepreneurs, right? Everyone thinks that you have all this time that you can go and just fool around, but you can't. You have to treat this like a real job, even more than that, right? And I think a lot of times, you know, I see Miles. I'm going to call Miles out right now. I see him. He doesn't look like he's in the office right now, Right. And, and again, I'm not, and I'm just saying this because this is the thing for me is that you need to be ridiculously consistent, especially in the beginning of this business. The analogy that I heard before, it's like a rocket ship, right? All this energy gets put into blast this rocket shit up in the beginning. And this is what's happening when you're starting your career in, in real estate or mortgages is that you got to put a lot of energy, a lot of these small things to kind of push that, that rocket ship up in orbit. And then it starts just spinning. Right. So again, guys, I think, you know, this is great that Enrique broke it down for us. And I love that he broke it down to the smallest thing, which is setting appointments. And then he also added the other prong side of it is this right here, the training. Right, guys. And so just I know it's going to take some time, guys. Me and Enrique have been there. Trust me. I met Enrique he was 18 years old and he was he was selling mortgages. Right. We just didn't one day click our heels and we're able to have a, a, a real estate and mortgage team like this. It took a lot of days, a lot of nights of us putting in the time and putting in the training. So you guys are doing an amazing job. But I just kind of wanted to add that in there. Thank you, Carla. I think also another thing to piggyback on Jason, too, is that when you're if you're honest with yourself already right off the bat and if you feel that, okay, I could make a hundred grand by September of next year, which is 12 months from now. What are the things that you have to do besides the fact that you run down the numbers? What are the activities that you have to do weekly? You have to write it down because if you don't write it down, it doesn't exist. If you have things on your head, like, oh, I'm yeah. going to open houses next week. Like, no, it's not going to work that way. You have to break it down weekly, daily, even hourly if you can to be more structured, to be more disciplined. And that speaks from my experience because when I first started, I was just like, oh, I'm just going to close some deals, everything. And when finally someone like it, we could sat me down and just like, okay, you want to do this goal, but you're hanging out with a lot of people. How is that going to work? So just be super honest. Yeah. I think the other thing is cutting out, you know, making a list of things that you should not be doing. Right. That's, that may be something yeah. as well. Yeah. And you got to check in with yourself as well. Right. Like, Right now, I'm, I'm giving you guys the, the formula, how to create the formula, but now you got to take this to the next level. And I know for me, like visual works, right? Like even if you have one simple worksheet or maybe like a poster or a board or something that you carry around, or maybe it's in your room and you can just say, okay, this week, these are the things I got to check off. I got to have posted on social media. I got to book two or three appointments 
And then I got to get this many in contract this month. Because when you can like break it down and see where you're at and check in on your progress, it's not just some far-fetched goal, right? The mistake that people make is they do this planning right here and they come up with the number and then they never go look at that number ever again. It's just something that was cool, a cool exercise we did, right? You now have to take this and you have to put it everywhere so you're constantly reminded of what you got to do, right? And check in with someone or check in with yourself, right? Um, I don't know. Do any of you guys use like whiteboards or anything at home where you like write stuff down and you just go and check it off? Does that work for you? Do any of you guys maybe use your phone? You can do this in your phone, right? Maybe some of you guys are better with spreadsheets and you want to create like an Excel spreadsheet and just break all these numbers down and, and you check off the boxes as you hit the milestones. Some people are more tech savvy like that. Um, but the point is whatever works for you, there has to be something that holds you accountable to it. Otherwise, it's like, all right, all right, great training, Enrique. Now I'm back and my goal is totally not in front of me no more, right? And that's that's the, the difference, right? It's you figure it out and then you have to actually implement it into your daily life, your daily practice, or else nothing will change. So as we leave right now, we're coming up on time. I want you to write in the chat, where are you going to have this goal at? Like, how are you going to hold yourself accountable? Are you going to write it down somewhere? Are you going to do a spreadsheet? What's going to be your thing that you do to constantly remind yourself of your goal? Like specifically, not like what's the actual action item that you're going to go do next with this information? This is, this is really good stuff, Enrique. I think, um, you know, even early on in our career, we didn't do this. So now we do this and it, it is definitely a game changer, guys, because you can see what the little things you have to do to go ahead and reach your end goal. So thank you, Kika, this is really good. Awesome, man, no problem. Yeah, and yeah, the first, <laughs> this is funny, guys, the first like 10 years of our business, right? We didn't do any of this. It was just like, work hard, close deals, work hard, close deals, right? Like, just keep, go, 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 go. It wasn't until like we got coaching like this where we actually wrote the number down, we broke it down, and then we checked in with our goal every month, every quarter. And then we knew where, if, are we on track? Are we off track? Do we got to push more? Do we got to pull back? Do we got to tweak it? That's when the business actually started taking off. That's when we, that's when we went from, you know, 30 million to 50 million to 70 million you know and it just our our team has just grown and the production's grown year over year ever since we implemented like these types of strategies very simple but just having it in front of you and checking in on it every month every week just making sure you're you're on track that's the difference maker right there that's the accountability portion of it otherwise goals just sound like a cool goal it just sounds like a dream um so Carla says, I printed my income goal and volume and framed it. There you go. Printed it out and framed it, right? Miles, make a note of it and make it my screensaver. There you go. Make it your screensaver. Uh, write down my weekly goals checklist on a card and have it with me every day. I keep my goals in a notebook and in my phone. List what to do weekly, daily, hourly. List what not to do. Uh, Dewey, where are you going to list this at? specifically is that going to be on your phone is that going to be something you print now like how are you going to make sure that this goal never leaves you i'm planning to buy a whiteboard and maybe put oh, it whiteboard. Or, or or maybe a post-it note um something that i can see it right when i start work okay so let me give you this and we'll we'll finish if it's a habit that you've never done, it's really hard to change habits and it's really hard to, to create new habits. So one thing that I heard from this business guy that I follow is piggyback off a habit that you already have. For example, like if you want to start taking vitamins and you never take vitamins before, but every day you make coffee. And this is what I did recently, right? Because I would always forget to take my vitamins because I had them in my, in my, uh, my bathroom. And I had them like in the drawer and I keep forgetting to take my vitamins and my fish oils and the stuff that I want to take. 
but I make coffee every single day, right? Like almost every day, like I have a, an espresso, pretty much nine times out of 10, I make coffee, right? So what I did is I put the vitamins right next to my coffee now. And guess what? I've been taking my vitamins every freaking day because I already have the habit of making coffee. And then the vitamin is right there. I just pop the vitamin right when I have my coffee. So the point I'm trying to make is if you're not a whiteboard type of person already and you go buy a whiteboard, it's going to end up just collecting dust, right? If you already know, like there's certain things you do throughout your day, like that are, you do them every day, no matter what, it's part of your routine. I would insert this goal in part of that routine that you already know you're going to do. Does that make sense? Like, I know I look at my phone, I'm on my phone all the time. So like, I would probably make it my screensaver on my phone because I'm like, it's always there. Or my laptop, my lap, it's, I'm either on my laptop or my phone. So like, if I was going to post any post-it note, it would go right on my laptop because I'm on my laptop all the time. Or maybe put it next to your coffee, maybe write your goals down and put it next to your toothbrush where you brush your teeth because you you know when you go pick your toothbrush up boom your goals are right there and you're not going to forget it all right so piggyback off the things that you already do and that will keep you more consistent with following through all right guys we're at time here uh hope you guys got some value out of this please take some action guys that's the next step let me know if i can help you in any way have a great day thanks guys